because it's based on the cycles of the moon. Although many Muslims don't eat or drink through the day during Ramadan, they do have some extra big meals before dawn and after sunset. Because having no food or water at all for a whole month would be impossible. But even with these big meals, Ali says Ramadan can still be pretty hard. It's a little bit hard, especially if you have, like sometimes we have football games and yeah, we still play, but yeah, we, we don't drink water. And he and his cousins say going to school can be tricky too. Usually my friends come with these amazing lunches from like different places and then I'm like in the classroom and they're all eating their lunch in recess and I'm led, like, you know, waiting for the bell to go and stuff, so that's probably the hardest part. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard. I get, I get hungry really easily, so... I haven't told anyone about it because I moved to this new school and I haven't uh, fasted there yet. Tomorrow will be my first day fasting at my new school. Around the world, there are more than 1.6 billion Muslim people. That's almost one quarter of the world's population. But not all of them fast during Ramadan. People who are pregnant, elderly, or people who are sick often don't. And kids only start doing it after they've reached puberty. But some do practice fasting before then, often just for a few days. Ali has been fasting for Ramadan since he was 10, and he says it's a bit easier this time. It was pretty really hard back then. You get more used to it. And although it's a tough month, these guys love learning about their religion. And it doesn't hurt that there's a big party called Eid when the month wraps up. At the end, we get this big celebration. We go to the mosque and do, like, our morning prayer and stuff like that. And it's, like, really fun to meet up with family and stuff. Well, there's a lot of food. We're allowed to eat, yeah, so... And there's rides, and it's a lot of fun. Ramadan can be a real challenge, but these guys wouldn't have it any other way. But yeah, like adding on to like what that video uh, touched on, um, I think it was like it's more difficult for uh, first generation uh, Americans, especially like from a Islamic nation to come to America and like go to school and like try to participate in Ramadan because you have like kids trying to like um, tempt you into eating. Like, oh, I can't remember growing up, but like, oh, nobody's watching, why don't you eat? Like, da, da, da. like people just always just, like just basically just be ignorant and just like say, oh, why are you doing that? Da, da, da. Oh, not even water. Oh, just, just drink some water. Nobody's looking. Da, da, da. But yeah, so what is Ramadan? So Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. So basically the Islamic calendar is based off the lunar calendar. So uh, that's why um, Ramadan moves up 15 days about every year because it's based off the lunar calendar and not the solar calendar, which is what the calendar that they use in the, the US and other Western nations. And basically Ramadan is just a month of, it's full of uh, fasting. So basically you can't eat or drink anything from sunrise to sundown. Um, and it honestly, it helps build uh, your uh, spiritual reflection on your faith and on yourself. Um, and it, it is believed that it is the month that the holy book, uh, the Quran, was revealed to the prophet. Yeah, so when is Ramadan? So like I said, it's based off the lunar calendar, which is why it moves up uh, about 15 days every year. So what do Muslims do during Ramadan? So like I said, we abstain from eating or drinking from sunrise to sunset. So no, with the only exceptions to that would be like if you were pregnant or if a female was going through her menstrual cycle or if you were ill or an elder um, and performing daily prayers. So the daily prayers are the five prayers um, in Islam, which are um, required, well, recommended for every day, but they're um, even more recommended during the holy month of Ramadan um, to give charity and donations. So basically, um, it's just reminding you of your place and to give back to those in need and those that are less fortunate than you. Um, and it's highly recommended to like uh, give donations out during Ramadan. Uh, perform Hajj. So Hajj is basically when uh, Muslims perform a pilgrimage to Mecca, which is in Saudi Arabia. And it's this whole, um, you're basically walking in the footsteps of the prophet and you're going around the Kaaba 
uh, which is um this it's basically a black uh, a large black fox and you're performing prayers and it's a whole um ritual which is part of the, one of the pillars of islam so it's recommended that if a muslim can because not everyone is like financially able to so that's why it's not like um required but it's like recommended that you make your pilgrimage to mecca but not everyone is fortunate enough to do that but it's highly recommended um and abstain from habits such as smoking caffeine gossip basically yeah just to realign yourself um to abstain from things that negatively negatively harm you um so it's like recommended to like break out your like your daily routine um you know you're not, you're you're not really recommended to like stay inside or just sleep the day away, um, to actually just be productive, and yeah. So what is the purpose of Ramadan? So yeah, Ramadan, um, the fast is to is intended to remind Muslims of the suffering of those that's fortunate, like I said, and to bring them closer to God, basically realign their uh, spirituality, realign their chakra. It all, it's also seen as a way to both physically and spiritually purify oneself while practicing self-restraint and get rid of your sins. So basically, yeah, it's just building willpower and just um, re reinforcing your religion and bringing you closer to your religion. Um, so yeah. And we got another video. Let's try to pay attention, guys. A lot of people so we know it as a month of fasting. In reality, there's a whole lot more to it. Ramadan is the ninth and most holy month in the Islamic calendar. A lot of people so we know it as a month of fasting. In reality, there's a whole lot more to it than that. And there's plenty of misconceptions around it too. So we're here to try and clear it all up for you. What exactly is Ramadan? The holy month is believed to be when the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. During this month, Muslims don't consume any food or liquid between Fajr and Maghrib prayers, which is the dawn and sunset. Not even water. So is it just about food? What else are you supposed to do? It's about being more pious and seeking spiritual closeness to God. Some Muslims spend more time in the mosque during the holy month or read the Quran. It's a time when Muslims should think less about materialistic things and focus more on charity, patience, and being grateful. But when do people eat? Before the sun rises and after it sets. Iftar is when Muslims break their fast, after sunset. It says that the Prophet Muhammad would break his fast with a date and a glass of water before praying, and then sit down for a light meal. Those fasting are supposed to follow a similar pattern by eating something light, taking a break, and then eating again. Sahurs and Muslims eat again before dawn. This involves staying up late and eating into the early morning. All eating and drinking must stop at Imsak. 10 minutes before dawn. Do working hours change during Ramadan? What about schools? So in most places in the region, working hours tend to decrease by two or three hours, whether you're fasting or not. School days also decrease by two hours. So what about those not observing Ramadan? Where can visitors, tourists, or non-Muslims get their lunch? Some restaurants and cafes close during the day, but most will have a closed-off area and remain open discreetly for non-fasters. Supermarkets stay open, and you can still order takeaway food. Can people who are not fasting buy alcohol or go to clubs and pubs? Some nightclubs close for the month, but bars, pubs, and lounges will generally remain open. They will just only serve alcohol after sunset. Live or loud music is also not played. So it's a great time to catch up with people over dinner. Put down your phones too. How can I be respectful to those who are fasting? During daylight hours, even non-Muslims are expected to follow the rules of fasting. Don't eat, don't drink, or don't smoke in public. You can drink water at the gym and all private beaches, but be mindful when going to and from the car park. Avoid chewing gum in public because it is seen as eating. The key is to be discreet. Your workplace is required to provide an eating room away from those fasting. Children are obviously allowed to eat in public. What happens if I forget it's Ramadan and I accidentally eat or drink in public? It's not the end of the world. Just try not to do it again, and hopefully no one was offended. Ramadan is also about practicing patience, so people are usually pretty forgiving about mistakes. Ramadan Kareem. Ramadan Sharif. Kalam. Wa antari khayyim. Asakum min awadi. Well, that was interesting. All right, and so now I'm going to move on to the next segment of our presentation. So basically, I'm just going to have our um, hosts and co-hosts basically share an experience from their childhood, teenage life, whatever, what have you, um, from about Ramadan. So Habiba, could you start? Thank you. Um, you guys can hear me, right? Okay, not a mute. Okay, cool. 
Um, damn, you put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> pressure, 100. Uh, it's okay, it's only 38 other people. <laughs> Malia, do you have anything in mind right now? Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Nura, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, I can say that I started fasting around like maybe seven or eight years old. And obviously, of course, it was like, you know, hard at first. But then I, I got used to it over time. And even one of the best things about Ramadan is getting to gather around a table with your family or your friends for iftar. And it's just like, you know, a really great gathering. Um, it's just like, you know, a nice time to, to spend time with those around you and, and like, you know, be thankful for them. So, so that's why I love about Ramadan and also like, you know, reading the Quran is one of the most important things. And yeah, just forgiving, forgiving people. And just like, you know, thinking about your entire spirit and yeah, so. I can also pass this along to my vice president in North. She would like to share anything. Yeah. Um, hi guys, my name is Noor. I'm the vice president of MSA. And uh, uh, similar to Nora, I started fasting, let's say around seven to eight years old, but my parents started me off like fasting half of the day. So it wouldn't be that hard for me. So you would fast half the day and then you would like eat the rest of the day and then you would flood with your family. And like she said, like the most part I enjoy about Ramadan was kind of seeing family that you haven't seen in a long time. Like when we all gather together for Iftar, it's nice to see like your cousins and your uncles that you may not see every day. So it's just a nice experience. And it's like the, a nice month to kind of get together and um, just feel together with your family. Um, Um, I can go next. Also, um, I grew up in Egypt, so I know for a fact in Egypt, like, it's different than any other country. We decorate, we put up lightings and stuff. Um, I didn't know that other countries don't, like, decorate for Ramadan, uh, which was weird to me. I was like, wait, Ramadan, like, it's all about, like, decorations and just putting lights up and stuff. But we, um, even though I moved to the U.S., we still do that in our house. We put up lights and, um, we invite people over for iftar. It's a really great experience. Oh, and I started fasting around um, nine years old. And also I started by fasting like maybe like two hours a day. I mean, two hours a, two hours in, in a day. And then my mom would like, you know, give me a dollar. Okay, you fasted today, here's a dollar. And then it keeps on going until I get like the hang of it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great experience. Malia, do you? have anything in mind right now yeah so um i started passing a little like le later than um you guys mentioned so like around like 11 or 12 um mainly because like i'm, I'm so used to always having to like eat food that like I, I feel like i can't function without eating food but like you mentioned habiba my mom also would pay me a dollar just so like i could like you know get the hang of it and like, it's like a reward um but yeah then i uh, easily got the hang of it it wasn't um that hard after like uh, the first two years so I think let me say like about 13, 14 years old that's when I felt like I got the hang of it but um yeah a lot of people I feel like think that during Ramadan we like lose weight and because we're fasting but honestly we gain weight because if our food is like it's elite so yeah and all the sweets we'd be doing after if thought it would be endless like we'd be eating for the for the for like what five six hours and then yeah, we don't lose weight at all. So um, Leif shared his experience. If you guys, if this is not only for like host, co-host, um, for participants too, if you wanna share your experience or if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat or just raise a hand, unmute yourself. Does anyone in the crowd have like a general question like for any of us? Or okay. you wanna share yeah. your experience? Both or you wanna? Um, like I, I, okay. Roman. Yeah, uh, I, I have a question. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, are there any ways that like uh, COVID and this whole like pandemic um 
change your experiences and like celebrations with Ramadan? Any like differences? Okay, thanks. So we have this prayer called um, Tarawih. It's like we go and pray at the mosque. Um, it's not, uh, it's a recommended prayer. It's not like required or anything, but it takes place like right after, um, like we break our fast, like right after sunset. Um, and we go to the mosque and pray, but because of COVID, like we couldn't gather at the mosque and we couldn't pray last year. And it's actually like one of my favorite things to do in Ramadan because like it makes me feel like it is Ramadan, right? But last year because of COVID, like we couldn't do that. Hopefully this year we can like open the mosque at like a certain capacity, but I'm not sure yet. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but this is how like COVID has affected our Ramadan. Also because of gatherings, we can't really gather with family, like outside like family members and stuff. Makes sense, thanks for answering. Yeah, sure. Well, for me personally, my family, after Ramadan is done, we have this um, celebration called Eid. And basically um, what my family does is uh, we go and we go out and like eat at a restaurant and just, you know, just be together, feel me? But last year, COVID, everything was closed. You know, the world was ending. I can't pronounce your name. I'm not even gonna try to put you. <laughs> it's okay. My name's Kene. So I was just wondering, because after listening to your stories, everyone kind of started their fasting at a different age. So how do how do your parents or whoever raises you decide what age that you start fasting at? Well, for me personally, or uh, well, it's recommended that um, uh, it should be started like for at puberty. But um, for me personally, um, I'm Palestinian, so you know, Palestinians are a little crazy about their religion. So um, my family, uh, my mom uh, made us start at five years old. So, you know, I've been fasting ever since I was five. So that's nice. But it's obviously different with, it depending on how the parent feels, like if their child can take it, like if they have, a, if like they're able to do it, it's basically dependent on the parent and the child, obviously, because yeah. nothing is forced. It's all recommended. Most, mostly everything in the Quran is recommended. Like nothing is like really enforced. Like so it's, it's like don't really believe like what you see in the media. Like nothing is like really like enforced. It's more so recommended because um, it's believed that like more people will like come to the religion. Like if nothing is like really forced, it's like recommended. You feel me? I'm sorry, Malia, you were talking? Oh, no, I was just going to say how um, a lot of children usually, like, they're really excited for it. Like, they beg their parents to fast during the month. And usually they start out with, like, um, fasting half or, like, just, like, drinking, like, liquids, just so they're, like, you know, um, getting the feel of how it is. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, for me personally, like, I felt like I have, like, I has, like, proved a point. Because, like, um, being raised in America, obviously, not being around, like, a lot of, I'm not being around my like actual culture. Like I didn't like really feel American, uh, Palestinian, I'm sorry. I really didn't really feel like Palestinian or Muslim being raised here. So like, I felt like I had to like prove myself. Like I had to prove like I was Muslim. I had to like, you know what I'm saying? That's why like I really like fasted. Like I had to like prove I was Muslim. Cause when I went to, it's, it's a story time. All right, tea time. It's like when I was younger, um, I was, uh, in like middle school, uh, they would always call me like a terrorist, whatever, la da da. So I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, viewed as an outsider in America, cool. So then I go to Palestine, right? Because my uncle got married. And T, while I'm there, these kids mocking me, calling me an American. I'm like, oh, that's nice. So I'm American here, but over there in America, I'm Palestinian. That's nice. So yeah, just felt like an outsider a lot. That's my personal story. Um, Anastasia, I believe that's how you pronounce her name, has a question in the chat. She says, your experiences are fascinating. How can you support your friends during Ramadan? Can you participate in Ramadan if you are not Muslim? Like, I can answer that also. Bada bing, bada bing. Okay. Um, you can participate, you can fast. Actually, like one of my mom's friends, we were just talking, like I was just telling her about this event and 
she told me like one of her friends really wanted to try it out with her but she couldn't skip like water so she was fasting like the whole day with my mom until she had to break her fast and she she just couldn't do it she had to drink water and stuff but ways you can support your friends I mean you can try it out with them I mean don't offer them food and don't eat in front of them because that's really annoying but you can there are different ways and you can just if you want to learn like I'm sure they'll be happy to answer your questions and like you know anything that you want to ask them about it but yeah so far that's how you would support them and like you can join too if you want and don't offer water during a hot summer day please don't just don't Maybe oh my call. goodness yeah <laughs> story time so I used to play baseball for my local rec center when I was younger. Someone come, someone said in the chat, um, don't say here, have some, no one is around, lol. True. So when I was younger, um, my baseball coach, he, uh, it was during Ramadan, it was during summer, and he was trying to get me and my cousins to drink water. And he, he was like really confused as to why we didn't drink any water. And it was like after a long day of practice, whatever. And it was like, it was a, he just didn't understand that like the concept and he was like well, come on like why, why don't you guys just drink water that's impossible like we were like what do you mean he was like you, you, there's no way someone fast doesn't eat or drink anything from sunrise to sunset and it's like a grown like the 35 year old man telling us this and i'm like no yeah it's possible and he was like no no it's not how, how can they do that in the desert because obviously it, uh this um it's an abrahamic religion so it originates from the middle east which is majority desert. So he's like, how, how the hell do people uh, hundreds of years ago fast in the middle of the desert with no AC and a la 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 without drinking any water and not die? You, you, like you would be dead. And I'm like, no, it's, it's possible. But yeah, so character building, willpower. These are all factors. It's all psychological. Okay, so you guys want to talk about like awkward moments that have happened to you during Ramadan from your American friends? Yeah, I have an awkward story. So this was when I was in high school, I was a freshman and it was during like the second day of Ramadan and some boy, he comes up to me in the hallway and he's like, oh, come here, come here. I'm just like, oh, okay. And so I go and he takes me to like the empty area of the hallway and he's just like, he brings out a water bottle and some saltine crackers and he's like, here, nobody's looking, you can take some. And then I'm just like, I literally I had no idea what to say, I'm just like, thank you I guess but I, I don't need it I, I just walked away it was so like awkward like I honestly didn't know what to say but yeah the next day I went back to him and I was like yeah you really shouldn't say stuff like that um we were fasting and he understood so that's that but yeah. it was the fact that he took you away from people so someone commented in the chat um Anastasia she said uh, I had a similar experience about bullying. I am an immigrant from Ukraine and here people call me a communist, but then over here, there, I'm not Ukrainian enough. So yeah, I feel like this is like really prominent amongst like first generation, like Americans in general, like you're not um, an immigrant enough. You're not, um, you're not American enough. And, but then when you go back to your original country, you're not, um, you're not um, ethnically enough. You don't fit in. You're not ethnically a part of them. Like, oh, you weren't born here. You're not Ukrainian. No, you were not Palestinian. No, la, la, la. You're not Egyptian. Like, you're not European. You're not Arab. You're not la, la, la. Yeah. Can I add something too? Sure. No. Yeah. yeah so uh, some people also ask, like, you know, how do Muslims get through the day? Like, you know, since they fast for like, you know, 16 hours. Um. Personally, what I do is that I would watch, like, you know, some television shows, like, you know, especially the the Egyptian TV shows that they create, um, especially for Ramadan. There's, I also, like, I also help my mom um, prepare iftar. I would read the Quran sometimes and pray. So uh, that's my experience of how I spend my day. Um how do you guys also spend your day? I'm just like, you know, curious to know. And I know that our participants might be curious as well. 
Well, for me personally, I actually like stay away from watching TV or movies because I try to. I, I actually try to make Ramadan harder for myself. Like I put myself through hell on purpose to make it more difficult for myself. It's so, like, for example, like um, I don't like in the summertime, like when it's when Ramadan starts, like I I just take the AC out of my room. You feel me? I'll make myself suffer because. Uh, for me personally, it's like, oh, my cousins like don't got any like the privileges I have back home, like that I do here. Like they don't got AC, they don't got all this sophisticated stuff like I do. So you know what? I'm just making it more difficult for myself. But that's just because I'm crazy. Here's something crazy I do with my sister and with Ben too. Um, so you know those like tasty videos, like the ones on your Explorer page, food videos. I watch those. Oh and no other time except for Ramadan, like at, around that time. Me and my sister just sharing videos to each other about food. Literally, when we're fasting, we're both dying. But yeah. And it it's weird because it helps. Like once you look at a, like a video that has, you know, like a, a good looking meal, it helps for some reason. I don't know how. Yeah. But <laughs> true. Yeah, and I'd be sharing it with like my, my friends and it's crazy. Any other questions, stories, comments? Um, Answer? someone uh, commented. Um, Anastasia again in the chat. Would you like to read it, Habiba? I, I can't see the chat. All right, I'll I'll read it. So basically, what Anastasia asked. Okay, there's two questions. So Anastasia first. She says, "How does your relationship with religion and God shift when you fast? Do you feel more closer to God and thankful by the end of Ramadan?" Would anyone like to answer the question? Okay, so I definitely feel very, very um, thankful for like everything that I have because obviously like Ramadan is so that you get to um, understand how it is like for like the less fortunate. So that's that. And then how does your relationship with religion and oh, definitely I feel so much more like, um, like I don't know how to explain it, but I'm definitely a lot more like, um, trying to like you know uh, uh like i don't know how to explain it like I, i'm trying to like get more into like the religion i'm reading the quran more i'm praying more on time because usually like with classes and all that it's like hard to um pray on time but definitely with ramadan it gives me like this like this automatic energy that i like want to like do everything on time and yeah mind you we're doing ramadan um, around finals semester so that's gonna be interesting <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do it but we'll survive actually I had my SAT in Ramadan like the SAT that got me here is <laughs> in Ramadan I was just I was dying the whole day I had a headache and obviously sitting in a chair for like three hours wasn't fun it was just it was great So yeah, for me, like, I personally uh, feel closer to my religion, I guess. Um, I do understand, like, the whole point is, like, to understand, like, what those less fortunate than you go through. And like I said, like, I try to put myself in their place. Like, obviously, we don't eat or drink anything for 16 hours, um, uh, which is just a part of their struggle. It's not, like, their full struggle, obviously. We still have a home. Or we still have a roof over our heads at the end of the day. Some people are, don't even have that. Some people are left with literally nothing, not even a blanket, just sleeping on the streets with the clothes on their back. But you know, we try our best to feel how they feel and try to understand and give back. Another question by Roman. Um, we may have gone over this, but is there a limit on how much technology you can use? Yeah, I can answer this one as well. So no, there is no exact limit, but it's a good idea just to um, like, you know, pray, read the Quran as much as you can, because that's the purpose of Ramadan is to get closer to, to God. So it's better just to, um, as I said, just like, you know, go over the practices that you do as a Muslim and and sure, you can go like, you know, you can watch TV or or go on your phone. But just use this time, like, you know, as a time just to connect with God. 
So that's all I can say. So it's basically like how you make it, make of it. It's like, it's like personally, like how you like want to try to get closer to God. Like for me, like I just, I try to unplug as much as possible because you're not really like recommended to do remedial and like useless tasks. Try, yeah, it's recommended to like try to be as, as productive as possible. Um, so yeah, so it's like me personally, I just try not to get close to uh, technology. But I do like spend hours playing FIFA. Ain't gonna lie. Someone asked um, your favorite passage or story in the Quran. Um, I have a favorite chapter, like it's a favorite, we call it surah, it's like a chapter, and mine is Rahman, it's like the most compassionate, that's like my favorite chapter, I like to read it a lot, but yeah, do you want to share yours, Habiba, or Lee? Um, mine is, one second, I actually have it. All right, I can't find it. But basically, I have a necklace, and it's basically um, it has uh, Ayat al Kursi, which is the throne verse on, um, inscribed onto it. And yeah, that's basically my favorite one. It's used for like protection and whatnot. Uh, my favorite verse would be okay, I'm gonna say it in Arabic first. It says, In Allah ma sabreen. And it translates to Allah is always with those who are truly patient. And that is my favorite, like, verse in the Quran. Because patience is, you need, you need patience in life in order to survive, honestly. Yes, but, patience um, is a virtue. Yeah, Um. any final thoughts, questions before we... Someone asked another question. There are some questions in the chat. For some reason, I can't pull up. So uh, Roman um, asks, what kind of charity work do Muslims do here in the U.S. during Ramadan? Okay, so me personally, um, I usually, uh, after iftar, like what San said, we have tarawih prayer. Usually we like bring dates and water. That's when we usually like give water and dates to people or the people who are praying. And then sometimes we do... Um, we give food to mosques around us when it's like sometimes people who are unfortunate go to the mosque to uh, break their fast. So we do that as well. So that's something that um, I do and like my family does during the month of Ramadan in order to like help and like do charity. That's the kind of charity we do in Ramadan. So um, for like actual like a um, Islamic like organization um, during the, like well, during the Flint water crisis, uh, I, I'm not saying it past tense, um, it's still going on. Obviously, like they're, they're still going through a water crisis in the 21st century, but it passed like what, seven years now? And it's still never been um, solved. But besides the point, I'm not gonna get into that. That's a whole nother topic. But so you guys all know uh, Flint, Michigan is going through a water crisis, like their, their water is polluted and whatnot. There was actually um, some mosques and some like um, Islamic charities that sent like clean water and um, just, uh, threw it outside and gave out free water bottles and had like um, stations where they, they cooked food meals for uh, those in need. But like, um, it was like a lot of, um, it was a lot of um, backlash from like the media cause like they were, the cops were like shutting their stations down for some reasons. But that's one thing that was going on in the US like just giving back to Flint uh, with the clean water and just uh, trying to feed those in need. Um, that I know of. There's also um, UNICEF, which is for uh, children in need, uh, refugees, which is like an international one. Um, so yeah, another question in the chat from Anastasia is, where can someone go to learn about the uh, Muslim faith? I don't know where to get started or how to begin the journey. I mean, I just answered that, but let me say, um, mosques aren't only inclusive for Muslims. You can just go and like, you can um, enter, like ask someone that you want to like go inside and you can ask like any shape inside or like whatever questions you might have, you can just go in. It's not like you don't have to be Muslim to go in the mosque. And I still do that. Like, I still like, if, if I have any question or anything, like any, um, mosque that I want to go to and like I would just go and like ask the questions away you don't have to be 
Muslim and you don't have to, there are no restrictions really. And you can honestly just teach yourself. You can just go on YouTube. You can watch um, some Islamic videos like this guy named Mufti. He's like really popular. Um, there also, you can just go to like an MSA meeting, like at your local school, like Penn State, you know, we have like a Muslim student organization here. Um, I know before um, MSA, when we were in person, like they would um, try to teach us students, like even like Arabic, like it was, it was a lit club. I can't speak on their behalf, but they're here. I think they can um, advertise for themselves if they would like yeah, to. Yeah, anywhere. We would be very happy because it's kind of dry now. Um, and you can just come in and like we can, we have meetings. We always like announce them and stuff. And if you can give me your Instagram or like whatever your email or something, I'll add you to the mailing list and then we'll send you emails constantly. Yeah, like so. in this, especially in this time, it's really important to like break down ignorance and like just try to like learn of other cultures and religions. So it's like why well, I want to like thank y'all for coming out because especially what's happened in uh, currently in Europe, especially in France, cough, cough, they've like passed some um, anti-Islamic um, laws, some Islamophobic laws through their Senate. So actually in France, it's um, against the law for a female under the age of 18 to wear the hijab and for a mother to accompany her ch uh, child at a trip with her hijab on. Yes, uh, can I? Uh, this is question. Yeah, I was just wondering, it's not necessarily related to Ramadan, but just the culture, like um, the origins of your names. Um, is that something you get from the Quran's like specific verses and stuff like that, or is it just more of a cultural thing? I was just wondering. The names uh, are Arabic. Habiba, your name, you can say, okay, I'm going to say what my name means. It's Salma. It's, it just means like peaceful, peaceful or like the peaceful one. And Habiba, you can say yours. Um, it doesn't have to be based on like um, Quran verses. It's, it's. It's, it can be like words or anything. So my name, it's Habiba in Arabic, and it means my love. <laughs> oh, <cool. That. laughs> um, Noor, Noor is always, no, no, Noor is also, um, go ahead, talk yeah, about Yeah, Noor and Noor, actually. Yeah. So it's a both of us, but um, yeah, I can sum this up. So basically our names are very similar. So it means Noor, I mean, it means light. Light, yeah. Light in English, yeah, so. Yeah, so it doesn't really have to be of a specific verse or um, part, just culturally different uh, names have like meaningful meanings, if that makes any sense. But my, yeah, Nur does mean light. So like Nur is the word of light in Arabic. So that is what my name and Nur's name mean. All right, so. Um, Thanks for asking. Now, yes, thank you, appreciate it. Like, um, it's not really like required to be named after like a, specific um, verse or individual from the Quran it's like a lot of um, Arabs or Muslims like do it like just just cause like that's why you have a lot of um, Muhammad's Muhammad's like you have a lot of like Adams you have a lot of like Ibrahim's Omar Musa Mo Moses like just cause that but now it's time for our last video and then our Kahoot and then we can have our windows Swipe up, now down. Smell like a real champ, champ. Make the switch at schmitz.com. The greatest woman soccer player of all time, Megan Rapino. Um, hey, Habiba, can you let Noor uh, screen share for the Kahoot? Yeah, I got you. Five minutes! <laughs> Hey, morning. <sighs> morning. So you don't need anything for 30 days? So not even water? So Ramadan's like Christmas, right? Um, well, no, really just- Wait, but like, don't you guys get presents? Yeah, you get presents, you get presents at the end of the month. Yeah, so um, it's, like, have... it's like Christmas. Sure, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Christmas, yeah. Hey. Oh, is Ramadan over? Oh no, I'm just on my period. Oh. 
Why? I've never seen that. I'm like, no. Nope. Uh, yeah. Like, you're not the target. Can you send me that presentation? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Is it mock up yet? No. How about now? Stop asking! I'm so stuck. I can't move. Same here. Do you want me? I'll drive. Six minutes! No, Baba. No one saw the move. Yes, I'm sure. No. No, 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 no. They didn't see it in New Zealand. No, Baba, don't get out the telescope. All right, just go to sleep, okay? Yellow Baba, go to sleep. Yeah, she's fine, I guess. We went on one date. No, Baba, I just met her. I'm not going to marry her. It's just so sad what's happening over there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, who time? So who's sharing? Who's sharing the screen? Noor? Yeah, me. Let me just log in real quick. Y'all better pay attention and get the Amazon card. Remember, first place is $40. Second yeah. place is $25. Unless y'all don't like money. I see five people left. Okay, now I can see the chat. Okay. Yuda, do you want to try logging in from your end for some reason? It's not. Oh, someone asked in the chat, where does the eating 10 minutes before sunrise concept um, stem from? I was also answering that chat. Um, so it, we just eat before like Fed, like the sunrise um, prayer. Um, it's time for like sunrise prayer because that's when we stop eating. So we eat before that. So we're like full. We feel a bit like full before we start fasting for like 15 hours. And then, yeah, until Maghrib and then we break our fast. So that's basically like breakfast. Yeah, like what, 3, 4 a.m. depending. Yeah, you can look I just can, compare it I to can cheer screen my um I can cheer screen but it's not letting me do that. Uh, oh no. Much. Yeah, it's already working. Thanks. Yo, whose screen is this? It's mine. Oh, do you know how to close a tab, my guy? That, I was about to say that. <laughs> oh, sorry. I have so many tabs. I'm sorry about that. It's... How? <laughs> 
I can't yeah, even I see what they I are. Yes, I and stand with women. Oh no, and Miss Anissa is the same. Don't listen to her. She has like a hundred tabs open. Yeah, no. Nope. It's also you, stuff. you know what that's like? That's like having a, a de- like a, a clogged up desk. Like, what do you even, you can't even read those tabs. It's just the logo. It's not even the original logo. It's just the world. Kind of bringing me anxiety. I'm stressed looking at it. Is, our, is everyone already logged in or does anyone need more time? Going once, going twice. Okay, people are submitting. Anyone? Anyone need more time? Yeah, give it like five more seconds. If you're still logging in, um, you can speak up and let us know. While more people log in, real quick, because I see a lot of people like um trying to hop off. I'm gonna uh, we're gonna launch a poll real quick, guys. Um, we'd appreciate the feedback. So just take like a second out the day. Oh yeah, before you start to code, just a yes. quick poll. Quick poll, please, guys. Is everyone done answering? There are two more people left. All right, I'm about to end the poll right now. Now you can start the coup now. Yeah. And let the Hunger Games begin. Okay, you guys, so how many Muslims around the world observe Ramadan every, every year? Ooh, good job. Nice. I, I didn't even know we talked about that. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, Scott, he said he wants his money. Okay. What does it why does the Ramadan occur on the ninth month of the Islamic calendar? Ooh. Okay. Do, you guys do the sleep. <laughs> Okay, Sky said, ain't budging. When Muslims are fasting, what are they doing? Ooh, new leader, <laughs> Kyle. Dun dun dun, Scott's been dethroned. Which options are included in the five pillars of Islam? Ooh. No person. Trick is Medina, guys. What is the holiest city in Islam? So all three are holy, but which one's the numero mm. uno? Holiest. Yep. I can see the mix up, Mecca, Medina. Both start yeah. with them. I feel y'all. Um, 
Who is excused from fasting during Ramadan? Select two. Um, Anastasia asked in the chat, has anyone, has anyone been to Me Mecca? Yeah, I have. Definitely want to. Really? You have? Really? Okay, after, oh. after, after the poop, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. My mom ma was a refugee. I'm poor. I come from a poor family. What Muslim holiday happens after Ramadan is over? Ooh. Be careful. This one is tricky. Tricky. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Where was Prophet Muhammad born? What do Muslims tend to do during this month? Select three, you guys. This one is so easy. Yeah. Why? Well, I feel like I that I was going to be upset. I <laughs> seriously. Sam, come on. Well, the word Islam mean. Oh, oh, he's saying this is coming fast. Y'all like, y'all look kind of confident out there. I like that. I like the confidence. True or false? Is it true that in Islam women are held in very low? Steam. Last question. Yep. Damn. Why you picture you though? Let's have a discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Jake. Ooh. Okay, Jake. I like that. Seven of you cheat, you don't count. Jake's second. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kavan. Okay. Good job. Actually, I'm going to pass on mine. Before Lake said it, I'm going to pass on my prize to Jake because he did really good. I, I, yes. I know this information. Okay. I like that. Yeah, you heard that, Jake? Um, Could Jake and Kavan put their um, PSU email okay. into the chat, please? So y'all could get your Amazon gift cards later today. Yeah. Got it. So oh, yeah. thank you for coming out. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, Habiba. No, I was gonna ask um Noura about her, her experience if she would like to share it. Do you mean like what experience? Um you went you said you went to um Mecca, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did go um, for Amra actually in November of 2019. Oh, everyone's leaving. Um, thank you guys for coming out. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of people just dropped out. Sorry to cut you off. I just want to, before everybody, before anyone else drops out, I would like to thank you guys for coming. Um, I really appreciate. We we all appreciate it, and it just you know makes us feel like you know, we're not alone. And yeah, we also would like understand. to make an announcement to um, an MSA. We have a speaker event coming up next Tuesday from seven to eight. So be on the lookout um, for any emails or on engage for more information about the event. So we would like to see you guys there too. It's also about Ramadan actually too. So the speaker is gonna talk more in depth about Ramadan. And if you guys have any questions, just come and join us. So we'll see you there then. Thank you. We also like to thank Oday for letting us co-host with them because this has been really fun. Thank you for hosting with us. <laughs> hey, it was me. I know. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
Okay. Enjoy your weekend. Good luck with your uh, upcoming finals, guys. Remember, we only have four weeks left. Y'all got it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. That was successful. No, thank you for coming out, Anastasia. Denise, you still here? I'm here. Yay! Good job, y'all. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't think so many people would show up. I'm sure. Yeah, either. I thought like 13 or 14 max. Three. Yeah, this was a good event. Thank you, MSA. Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like like someone was saying earlier, our events throughout COVID have been dry. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to see a big turnout and to kind of like um, join with O'Day and uh, be able to reach so many people today. So. When, is the, was the, when is the next event again? Uh, it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's next Tuesday at 7. Is it at 7? I'm not sure. Oh, no, no. I have it on my calendar. And I don't even know. Seven to eight, I think. Either six to seven or seven to eight. But I'm yeah. But we'll send emails, so you're definitely gonna get an email invite. Yeah. So yeah. Most likely from seven to eight.